All right, so I'm kind of winging it on the wood thing. I have several ideas. One is to use the wood that I cut with an ax last year for my firewood in out of the firewood pile, uh, kind of as I go and just kind of select pieces out and saw out blanks and use those. That would be cool. I'd like to do that, but there's a couple problems with that. One is it's seasoned in the sun all season, so a bunch of it cracked, and uh, you know I may or may not be able to find pieces that aren't you know checked and cracked. The other problem is it gets these little beetles. I think they're called death watch beetles. They're little tiny beetles and they drill through the wood and make all kinds of powder and leave little holes. So they like the tan oak a lot. It's one of their favorite foods along with bay. So it's a, a high probability that much, if not most of the tan oak has those beetles in it. Um, whether they'll keep working all winter long or not, I don't know. I kind of think that they probably will. So they could be spreading in there or you know just chewing up the wood as the winter goes on. And I won't know if that's going to work because I need to just be burning the wood and, and hydrating pieces out and saving them as I go. So we're going to have to see. So it, just in case, I'm going to put up some uh, green wood right now to season. As far as green wood goes, I have two ideas. One is to slab out green pieces of wood and season them. Of course, that's going to season quicker, but I'm not in particularly in a hurry. The problem with that is if those pieces cup and change during drying, then I have to bring them back to the dimension and size and every thickness that I want. So I have to leave them pretty thick, which is going to entail a lot of extra planing work. If I season little blocks of wood and then saw the pieces out very close to the size I want, then that will be a lot less planing and a lot less work overall, I think. So I'm going to do a little bit of both today and then also plan on using that wood out of the woodshed. And we'll just see how that turns out. Not here. Get rid of that. We'll start here. Okay, no need to work way more wood than we need. I may make the straps eventually a little bit longer than this, so I'm gonna just cut it, you know, two inches too long or something like that. That looks pretty good. Almost set. I'm thinking, yeah, yep, yep. I kinda wanna, kinda wanna cut it like that. But that's not the way it wants to sit. We can fix that. Yep, we can fix that. Beautiful. Pretty damn good. Because I'd done that for like a thousand hours before. Find a place where it sits. I'm going to aim right right through the center there. I'm going with gravity, so, you know, I'm letting vertical perpendicular gravity here dictate where the cut goes rather than trying to force it to one side and then maintain that against gravity through the whole cut, because this is just way easier. Man, I love this saw. It's so wide. It just, once you get it going, man, it just, it stays the course. Pretty much right down the center. Very, very close. Let's take a close look at that gorgeous grain. All right, so on this one, I think uh, I'm going to go ahead and cut a few slabs out of here. I think I'm going to take, cut this in half, 
cut a slab off and then cut a slab off here and maybe one here so I'm thinking I'll get four pieces out of this maybe go slightly off center to get rid of the center of the log so you don't want that now I I'm not much of a woodworker. I'm pretty good with seat of your pants, like rough green woodworking, out of the firewood pile type of woodworking. I mean, I, I think I have something to offer a lot of people, um, but I'm not a fine woodworker by any means. This is interesting, there's some blue staining in there. It actually looks really neat, but I think we're gonna cut all of it out. Okay, so first I was just marking where I wanna cut make something of a line so I can take aim. Well, we're committed now. If you're interested in real woodworking, I really like Paul Sellers' videos. I like how practical he is. I like how he's not all about gear. Skills over gear, always. That's my motto. He's all about how can you do this, you know, cheap. Well, I veered off a little there. Not the preferable, but not the end of the world either. We're gonna take one slab here, maybe around three eighths of an inch, maybe a little, a little less. Again, because it's going to save me work planing if it's not too thick. But it's going to shrink and it could warp and twist and all kinds of fun things. That does look fine. Okay, so we're gonna whip out a, a batch of those. See that pretty blue? Kind of cool if we get that in the wood. I think that's gonna happen though. So that didn't go too bad. These look all right. Some of them are a little tapered. That one looks excellent. That one looks really good too. See, this one's tapered. But nothing, uh, nothing too horrible here. Some cupping. Uh, there's a good chance this wood is gonna warp and cup and change a lot. Really not a very stable wood, but it sure is beautiful. Piece number two. I want a block out of this that I can cut out a whole bunch, just like that. Not the best grain orientation, but in the piece this size, unless I cut one piece out and then another and then another, like quarter sawing. And you know what? That's what I should do. I'm gonna cut this, and then I'm gonna just flatten this off, and I'll season that whole block, and I'll season this piece as well. Let's do that. We'll grab some fat. We basically have two different products here. We have these little slabs and we have two blocks. So these guys I'm not as worried about because they're much thinner and they're less likely to check when they're drying. But I do want to oil the ends of them to make sure that those don't check because the ends are the part that's most likely to check and that needs slowing down when it dries. And I may just oil these knots too. So those I'm just gonna oil the ends. These, however, I'm gonna oil the entire thing. 
The drone is known for checking a lot, and there's no doubt if I leave these out, they're going to check. And I don't think waxing the ends is probably enough either. So these get a full coat of oil. Now what I have here is the deer fat that I just rendered for the video on preparing fats, you know, rendering fats for tanning leather. And I've heated it up. That was a um, little dish of hot water. So it's liquid. And this stuff I love for oiling wood because it's almost like wax. You know, it cools. You'll see it cool immediately on this cold, wet wood. See that? And it just forms this hard, waxy coating. Even if it gets warm and the liquid, more liquid portions of the oil, because, you know, when you, when you have an oil, a natural oil, it's not just one fatty acid. It's always a mix of different fatty acids. So that's good to keep in mind because people will say, oh, you know, this deer fat is saturated. Well, yeah, kind of, but it's a combination of a bunch of different fatty acids. It's just predominantly saturated fats. And that's what makes it so waxy like this. So I don't know where I was going with that, but um, this is why I like it. It's like wax. The stuff is amazing. You can actually dip candles out of this, and as long as they don't get really warm, um, you can actually just make candles just out of this. The same goes for beef tallow, but uh, deer tallow is especially waxy. So, oh, I was saying, even if this gets hot repeatedly, and the more liquid portions of the, the more liquid fatty acids in here soak into the wood, it'll still leave a coating of what I think is stearic acid, which is an extremely saturated, very waxy fat, and it'll leave that still on the surface. That probably isn't gonna happen to this because it's winter and these are gonna dry pretty slow. Eventually I may bring them into the house, we'll see. But this will season out almost for sure without cracking from my experience which is considerable putting up, you know, lots of wood like this for my lathe. Very occasionally I will get some cracking with this treatment, but it's fairly rare as long as the piece isn't too large. It's the other factor in seasoning wood without cracking is the smaller it is, the less likely it is to crack. And again, these guys, just a quick wipe on the end. In fact, I think I'll just go ahead and dip them. And we'll just stack them up in a cool room, unheated room. Um, the other thing I could do is put these in a paper bag or I could put them in a plastic bag that leaks, like poke holes in a plastic bag or leave the mouth of the bag slightly open. But that will prevent, you know, it'll increase the humidity and prevent air from flowing across the pieces of wood, which will make them dry much faster. And then once they're partially seasoned, especially these, uh, even like in a week, I could bring them into a warmer place and speed them up if I want to. Although I'll probably just stack them somewhere and forget about them. So there we go. Well, that was fun. Next in this project for the axe drops, we need to finish up the hides. That entails soaking them in the lime until they're ready to dehair, putting them on the beam, getting rid of the hair, and then we're going to reflush them over and over again, rinse the lime out, put them through a couple of other processes in there having to do with soaking them in some kind of gross stuff that works miracles, and then then we'll prepare some bark and actually go through the tanning process and then we're going to finish them and of course eventually we're going to turn this wood into little paddles to make the straps. What else? Oh yeah, we're going to make some hide glue along the way and that will be its own separate video. Okay, so I'm going to sit here and uh, blank out some more wood until it gets too dark and call it a day.